Well, hello out there, everybody. Happy New Year. Uh, my name is Martin. It's my pleasure to be your host for today's webinar because now that we're on the other side of the busy holiday season, this time of year is when POD merchants like you decide on their plan of attack for the upcoming new year. So in order to uh, determine which way to take your business, we'd like to make a suggestion. Uh, if you are uh, either brand new or if you, even if you've been at this for a while but have been selling on a marketplace, my suggestion to you is to consider taking your business to Shopify. And to and, uh, what we have done is we have partnered with literally the best person on planet Earth to be able to take you through everything you need to know to open a Shopify store. And that is Joe Robert from POD Ninjas. Joe, how are you doing today? Doing good, Martin. I, um, I was pretty calm, and then you just introduced me as the best person on planet earth uh, to talk about Shopify. So um, now uh, my heart rates up a little bit, but uh, I'm doing, I'm doing good. Um, thanks good. for having well, me. Excited to be here and uh, hang out today. No problem. Well, nobody can call me a liar because it is 100% true. Uh, and so what we've done here is we partnered with Joe and we're going to bring you a series of three webinars. Now, today's webinar is going to be all about how you uh, set up your store for success with Shopify. And then on uh, in two weeks, on January 18th, we're going to talk about how you then launch your store. And then we're going to wrap it up on February 1st with, great, now that everything's up and running, how do you scale that Shopify store? We're going to do these every two weeks for from here on out, giving you a week in between so that you can apply the information that has been presented. And by the end of it, you'll be up and running and uh, with, with your successful Shopify store. So be sure to join us for all three webinars, but no need, uh, but no need to, to worry. If you can't watch them all live, you can watch them all on the live section of our YouTube, uh, of our YouTube page. And while you're there, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And that goes for you watching live right now. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. All right, folks, well, let's take a care of a little bit of housekeeping before we get on with today's uh, presentation. I am going to uh, let everyone know that at the end of today's presentation, we'll be doing a live Q&A session where you can ask your questions to Joe himself, and he and I will be happy to answer those. And also, as soon as we're done, we're going to put a link in the chat for... Uh, a, a, a post-event survey where uh, we'll, we'll have a trivia question based on the information that Joe presents today, where three of you that answer the trivia question correctly will win a prize package of a Printify Webinars hoodie, a, print, a personalized Printify Webinars mug, and $50 of Printify sales credit placed, boom, directly into your Printify account. So pay attention, there will be a test. And at two points during today's presentation, I'm going to ask you to get out your Printify account, navigate to the payment section, uh, and scroll down to where it says uh, coupon code, because I'm going to give away a coupon code, and the first one of you that types it in and hits enter will receive an instant $50 Printify sales credit directly to your account. And that's going to happen at two points during today's presentation, so be ready for that. Have your Printify account open and ready. And I'd like to invite everybody watching, either live or on repeat, to join me for my live Q&A sessions where you can sit down with me on Mondays and Wednesdays, 100% free. We talk about literally everything under the sun, whatever you want to talk about. My only goal is to make you more knowledgeable and therefore more profitable. So come sit down with me in my home studio. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the issues of the day. Let's talk about where you are and let me help you get to that next level. Okay. And we're going to pop that link into the chat. You can sign up right now. Again, it's 100% uh, free. Okay. Um, so what are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to cover a, a few subjects. First, we're going to talk about why Shopify. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between the uh, Shopify version of, of print on demand uh, versus the marketplace. And we're going to talk about how to find a niche, what products to sell, peppering in some really cool uh, tips and tricks along the way. And then, of course, that live Q&A session at the end. And no need to save all your questions until the end and then put them all into the chat there at the uh, uh, all, all at once. When those questions come to you during during uh, Joe's presentation, just go ahead and pop those into the chat. Our uh, moderator, Christops, will collect those, and I'll be happy to read those at the end. So no need to save on to those. Uh, 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 no need to save those questions until the end. And uh, thank you so much. There's so many people checking in. We've got Colin from Florida. We've got Manish from India. We've got Denise from uh, Las Vegas and uh, Isabella from Belize. I love seeing uh, how international you folks are, but thank you all for joining. Let's go ahead and get going with today's presentation. Um, Joe, now, first of all, um, who, 
Who is this for? Who is this series of webinars for? Why Shopify? And I mean, it's, is, is, this, is, this, is this for the newbie? Is this for someone who's been at it for a while? What's your take on that? I, I think, so th this specific webinar is for people that are looking to build a print-on-demand brand. Um, to, to me, building a brand is not something that is, you know, just for the experts. I think sometimes there's, you know, I, I don't want to say a myth, but there is, you know, a myth that exists that for someone to build a Shopify store, that you need to do that only after finding success on a print-on-demand marketplace. Uh, for everybody watching, uh, type the word myth in the chat if you've ever heard that or thought that, you know, before you pursued your own store, your own brand, your own website, that you first needed to, you know, have success on, on a marketplace like Amazon or Etsy or something like that. This this series is is for anybody that's looking to get started building their own brand. You know, one of the analogies that uh, I sometimes give when it comes to this conversation, Martin, is if you were someone, Martin, let's say that you, uh, what's, your, what's your favorite food? Um, My curious. favorite food? It'll help uh, with prime the analogy. Rib. Yeah. Prime rib. All right. Yes. So let's say that you wanted to start uh, selling prime rib. Um, okay. <laughs> you, would, you would never think that in order for you to get started doing that, you need to first go to craft fairs and different events and flea markets and open up like a tent uh, there uh, and start selling prime rib as a test to see if people like it before opening your own restaurant. Surely people all the time start a restaurant, right? Um, that is a, 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 a common thing, right? And so what I'm saying is if you're in the, like in the print on demand world and you're looking to start a brand, like you don't need to first go to that craft fair. You don't need to first set up shop on Amazon or Etsy to validate your idea, right? A lot of people say, um, you know, some of that might be easier. It's it's cheaper. It's it's less time consuming. I don't think that's necessarily true. You know, just like no one says, you know, Martin, go sell your prime rib at the craft fair first. It's going to be easier for you. It's going to be cheaper. You know, starting a business, prime rib or print on demand is is work, and there's going to be you know some 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 expenses, some work involved, um, and you can gain experience at the craft fair. It's just not always not always going to be you know, 100% transferable, um, and, and it's definitely not required. So this is for everybody. Um, what I have kind of prepared for, for people watching is um, some slides, and um, I'm, I'm, I have my preview up. I don't see any of them, so hopefully, I'm not sure if you guys can see them or not, but um, building oh, yeah, your own brand good. is just an, it's just an entirely different strategy uh, that, that's built for the long term. Um, what you're going to be doing is trying to build a, a presence for, for your online store on, on social media. And this is honestly one of the biggest opportunities that exists right now. Uh, these are some stats that I put together uh, from an article on, on Forbes. Um, social media is not new for, for business. 77% um, of businesses right now are using social media to reach their customers. 90% of social media users are following at least one brand on their social media pages. 76% of social media users have said that they have purchased something on social media. Type the word me in the live chat if you have ever purchased something that you saw on social media. Um, and there is built-in buyers, right? That's a term that's thrown around a lot for places like Amazon or Etsy and other marketplaces. Um, there's 2 billion people on Facebook. There's 500 million people on Instagram. There's 50 million on TikTok. And that's every single day. That's not just total users. That is every single day, tons of people on social media who are buying, uh, are buying products. And, you know, like I said, this is not just for experts. Um, there is no shortcuts. You know, creating any business is going to require work. No matter what type of POD process you plan to follow, marketplace or a standalone store, there's going to be work there. There's going to be a learning curve. You know, the ultimately choosing the route is about aligning what you're doing now with your future goal. Okay, most people that are pursuing building their own website have a desire to build their own brand, right? To sort of build something for the long term. Right. Type the word brand in the chat if if that's something that you feel like matches, you know, your your long term vision for for print on demand. Um, the strategy that Martin and I are going to kind of outline for you here in this webinar in this webinar series is to help you to get started with all of this. Right. To create your product line, to work on your store, to start, 
you know, with some really simple marketing strategies to begin growing your audience as well as talk about using paid strategies with influencers and ads uh, and, and more. And um, I'm excited to, uh, to, to, to continue uh, here. So I know that was kind of a long winded answer, Martin. Do you want to jump in and kind of talk about first steps for, for everybody? <laughs> Uh, well, in terms of first steps, uh, I think uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that uh, that juicy uh, meat on the bone for you. Uh, I just I just want to sure. let people I just want to jump in and maybe uh, give you a chance to plug your socials if uh, anybody wants sure. to. Yeah. If, if if first of all, if you're not following Joe right now, you're doing yourself a disservice. So, uh, <laughs> how do people get in touch with you on social media? Um, so I just I actually I'm watching the YouTube stream right now, and I just commented in the live chat from my YouTube channel. So if anybody just wanted to click that, my, my name there, you can go to my YouTube if you just wanna search for it. It's just Joe Robert. I try to upload helpful content. I review a lot of Printify product samples and um, I also have a uh, print on demand Facebook group. We have almost 80,000 members inside. So you could check that out. It's just print on demand ninjas is the name of the group. And, um, and those are, my, those are my, my couple of plugs. Wonderful. Yes. And I believe we have our own uh, link that we're going to pop into the chat for you about uh, a free step-by-step course. Why don't you, uh, why don't you tell us about that? Yeah. Yeah. A little while ago, um, there was a couple folks at Printify that I kind of partnered with and we put together a free step-by-step course where I made a whole bunch of videos. Um, There's about 30 videos in there that are all, it's all free. Um, PODNinjas.com slash free course. There's going to be a link in the chat. You can just click and um, it shows you how to set up your Shopify store uh, using Printify, how to install Printify, how to publish products to the store, how to customize the store. Uh, there's also some social media stuff in there as well, and it's and it's a free it's a free course, um, and it's available um, on the website. Excellent. And uh, for those of you watching on repeat, don't worry. Just go to the de- the video video description. You'll find all the links that we uh, talk about today in the description. Okay. All right. Well. That's enough from me. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, the keys to the the keys to the car, and you go ahead and sure. uh, take take us away down uh, d- down the road to opening up a Shopify store. So take it away, Joe. Sure, sure. I, I think ultimately one of the things that I always start with when I'm when I'm when I'm working with someone, um, helping them with their store. When I'm thinking about a store that that I want to open, I have a couple. I, I have one thing that I'm working on right now, but I have a couple things that I'm kind of planning for uh, the future for some for some new store concepts. But um, the most important part when you're getting started to this, before you worry about anything on the screen right now, right around ads or social media or your domain name or your logo or anything like that, the most important thing at the beginning is figuring out what you're actually going to sell your, your product line. Um, that means your niche, that means your products, and that means your designs. This is the part that I have found that a lot of people that are getting into launching their first store rush through. Um, for some reason, everybody always, you know, at least with people that I work with, they, they, they immediately just want to learn about how to launch ads on Instagram or, or how to work with an influencer or something like that. And, and the key first is making sure that this part is perfect, right? So if you're someone that has already gotten started with your own website on, on Shopify or, or even somewhere else like WooCommerce or something else that Printify integrates with, or if you're someone that has not, but you want to, like this is first things first, what you need to actually figure out. Your niche is your target market, okay? Your, your product, that's your competitive advantage. Okay? And then your designs, those are what people are actually paying for, okay? These three things together, I sometimes talk about as being what I call a winning product. A winning product is the perfect combination of a niche choice, a product choice, and a design. Okay, If you can do all three of these things flawlessly and you can put it in front of people on social media, you can can make sales. Like I said, there's people out there that are buying products. Earlier, I told you guys to type in the chat if you've uh, ever bought things on social media. This this is the the key to that. I think... When people are beginning to think about these things too, like from a first things first perspective, what they don't realize is how unique of a business model this actually is in the sense that if you and I are planning to start our own store and we're starting to sell products to people on social media, tell me in the chat what your potential customers are not doing. This is something I talk a lot about in my own trainings is it's very unique, right? If you're selling on Amazon, that's a different customer. If you're selling on Etsy, that's a different customer. Tell me in the chat what 
people on social media are not doing as they're as they're browsing around. I see Charlotte in the chat. She typed uh, buying. Right. Customers on social media are not buying. They're not shopping. Right. They're browsing. Okay. Which means we're trying to get impulse customers. Which means we need to show someone something, and we need to get them to want to buy it without them knowing anything about us. We need to get them to make an impulse purchase. That's much different than listing products for sale in search results on a POD marketplace, okay? And that's why these three things are incredibly important, okay? Your niche, that's what gets people interested, okay? Your niche represents something that people feel like they are connected to. Your niche should be something that, that people love. Your, your niche should be clear, Okay, your niche can't be in this type of an environment, something super abstract. It can't be something that's just like a silly, sarcastic quote. Like it has to be something. Without a niche, people will not make impulse purchases. Type the word impulse in the chat if that makes sense. If we're on the, if we're on the same page with that, um, the next couple of slides will make sense because we're gonna talk through the million dollar question. Um, how do you find a niche? How do you know if your niche is good or not? Right. What I'm first trying to do is, is really make you aware that if you're getting into, you know, building your own brand, if you're getting into trying to sell and take advantage of this opportunity with social media, you have to realize that you are trying to get people to make impulse purchases. And the only thing that's going to get people interested is your niche. OK, I'm seeing a bunch of people typing uh, impulse in the chat. So cool. Um, whenever I've tried to teach, I've, I've, I've been teaching POD for a little bit as well as running my own stores. And one of the things that I've tried to do is explain this concept of a niche to people in a way that really makes sense, um, in a simple way. Um, I think the term niche gets thrown a lot around a lot. And I think it's very easy to think you have a niche that is not actually a niche. Okay. To me, there's two types of niches. We have passions, we have identities. If, if what you're thinking of selling to is not one of these things, then it's likely not going to succeed in an impulse environment, okay? Something like a passion is not just things that people like. It's not avocados. It's not random things like sunsets. It's, it's passions, right? It's hobbies, activities, interests, skills, that people have or things that people collect. It's something that they are like obsessed with. It's something they do for fun. Okay. It's not people that love nature. That's way too broad. Okay. Instead of doing that, like choose a specific passion that people do in nature, like hiking or camping or fishing or rock climbing. Okay. Your niche isn't necessarily people that love to cook pizza at home. Maybe that's too specific. Cooking in general would be better, or maybe like different types of cooking, like barbecuing and grilling. Okay, some passions as well, maybe are extremely passionate, but also too small, like skydiving, right? I don't want to guarantee anything, but I, I bet if, Martin, we have 277 people watching right now, I bet you very, very, very few have actually been skydiving, right? It's a very low it, maybe that, maybe that's not the right way to put it, but it's a very you know, <laughs> rare passion, right? So it's passionate, sure, but there's not a lot of people out there, right? So passions is the first type, okay, of, of niches. Um, everybody type passion in the chat if you're if you're with me on that. If you if you're with me on that, it should be very easy for you to start thinking of all these different passions, all these different hobbies, these activities, these interests, right? Things that are fun for people, okay. The second one here is identities. And this is something that people view as like representing who they are as a person, um, as, as, a, as a human or, or as an adult or as a, as a, a parent, right? It, it's something that like a nationality where they're from, it could be a country, it could be a specific state, it could be a city, it could be a region. I've seen print on demand stores for people that live in the South and that's just a region, right? The Southern United States. I've seen print on demand stores for people that live in the Pacific Northwest or East Coast, West Coast, right? Nationalities are huge ways to create print on demand products for. There's also lots of different occupations and jobs that people are extremely proud of. There's jobs that are a bit rare. There's truly passionate. 
for astronauts, like that's probably, I don't know, Martin, what do you think? 281 people here. Do you think anybody's an astronaut? Uh, I think the chances are low, but they're never zero. <laughs> Fair. Um, my point is, if you're if you're choosing occupations, like try to choose occupations that you know ultimately are going to have a very high um, rate of 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 people. Maybe not. Maybe that's not the right way of putting it, but popular ones. You know, um, the big question I get with these with these two though is, you know, people wondering how they you know, should choose if they, should they choose things that they personally like or things that like jobs that they personally have, um, type the word me in the chat. If you are currently thinking about choosing a niche that you're personally interested in, I think that's a great way to choose a niche. I think it's sometimes a little bit harder to find a niche if you're not personally interested in it. You know, um, if I'm being honest, though, I would say the majority of print on demand products I've sold have been to niches that I'm not personally a member of. I've sold lots of products for different passions and different things uh, like occupations that I've never had or ever have. But if you're just getting started, your first foray into something that you know you actually love. And the and the key here, like I said, is doing this so that way people become interested. Okay, first things first, you need a niche, you need a concept, someone to sell to. That's your target market. Okay. The second part of this is, is choosing products. Okay. When we're choosing products, we want to make sure that we can not try to do everything. Um, and, and what I mean by that is Printify has over, I don't know how many products, Martin, over, over 800, I think is the number I saw on, um, on the Printify catalog at one point. Um, we're at, and, we're, and we're adding a we're, we're adding them all the time and there's over 800 who knows how many we're going to have by the end of this year awesome but um if, my point if, is go ahead yeah I, I i i hate to interrupt but i'm nothing if not a man of my word and i told my th this audience that i was going to give away a little bit of money so i'm going to do that here real real quick give you a chance to get a drink of water uh so everybody i'm going to ask you to take out your uh your printify accounts and uh, click on where it says wallet, navigate to the payment section, and go to the coupon section and get ready to enter today's first coupon code. Okay, and now there's going to be no bells and whistles saying you won or that you lost or anything like that. You're either going to get the uh, 50, uh, $50 fifty or you're going to see a notice that says this coupon does not exist because we only made one of these coupons for the first person who can type in the code word the fastest. Okay, so if you're ready... Uh, let's go ahead and give away a little bit of money. And if you do win, let us know in the chat so we can all celebrate. Today's first coupon code is marketing 2024. That's what this uh, presentation is all about. And in the spirit of uh, getting your marketing, uh, getting your marketing strategy set for 2024, we're going to pop a link into the chat to a, uh, to, to an article that gives you all the details you need to know to plan your marketing strategy uh, for the uh, 2024 uh, upcoming year, as well as a downloadable calendar that gives you all the little holiday dates, not just the big ones, but all those little ones in between. So you can find the ones that apply to your particular niche, just like we, just like Joe was uh, discussing uh, earlier, so that when those dates come up, you can plan accordingly and uh, and. Um, attack those dates and get the sales that are applicable for, for your particular uh, customer. Okay. So download that, or excuse me, cl click on that, download the uh, PDF uh, of the uh, marketing calendar and uh, congratulations to the winner, but don't worry, we will have an opportunity for you to win a little bit later today. Okay. And uh, I'm done interrupting you at least for now, Joe. So go ahead and take it away. Let's talk about products. No, you're good. You're good. I actually realized that I skipped ahead one slide. I have a couple of insights to share um, about validating a niche. Um, I think it's very easy for you know people to hear me talk about different passions and things like that, different jobs, and to really understand what, what I'm talking about, right? But how do we actually validate, right? How do we know is the how do we know if the niche we're choosing is actually a good one? How do we know if it's a good one to get people to make impulse purchases, you know, and I, and I wish I had, um, something for you, like some sort of a software that you could like type your niche into it. It would tell you like thumbs up or thumbs down, but it doesn't exist. Um, which means we can only do a couple of, couple of things. Um, the first is first off, making sure that your niche actually fits into one of these categories. If you 
have to if you if you feel like you have to do like a whole bunch of mental gymnastics or that you have to like explain your niche to the point where you're fitting it into one of these categories then there's a good chance it might not be actually in these categories as i'm as i'm talking about this too in the live chat if you guys want to type niches in there i have the live chat up and i can give some um, some insights on it too but um, in terms of like some actual steps you can take um, one of the first things I always do um, with people um, that are conceptualizing a niche for the first time or um, if I'm conceptualizing a niche for the first time is I, I try to make sure that there's other sellers out there. Um, to me, I think finding other sellers is a good thing. Um, I think when we're building our own brand, right, it's irrelevant how many other sellers there are, right? Of course, that's a big factor if you're selling on a marketplace, right? If you're choosing a very popular niche, a very high competition niche on a marketplace, that's a bad thing. When you're building your own thing, other sellers is good, right? It shows you that there is a foundation there. It shows you that there's buyers, okay? A couple people in the chat um, have some really good ones in there. Uh, traveling, great. Uh, religion, definitely an identity. Someone says education. I would say maybe focus more on people that are teachers, right? Like really highlight that as the actual niche. Uh, someone says wellness and self-care. I think I think that might be close. Um, I, I would say it's close. Um, it's kind of broad. Um, someone says relationship and hobbies. I would try to nail down like specific types of relationships, like the proud mom of a baseball player or a uh, 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 the proud dad of a of a soldier or something like that. Um, hopefully that makes makes sense. You might sometimes too, like as you're looking for other sellers, Google is a, is a great resource. Um, you can go on Google, you can type in your niche and a product that you want to sell, and you will very quickly see lots of different stores that that exist. This is, you know, one of the easiest ways to discover your competitors that are building stores that you're trying to, you know, basically emulate and and compete with. And sometimes you might find that the niche you're attempting to sell to is maybe a little bit obscure because you're having trouble typing in the right things to find what it is, you know, you're you're looking for. Okay? Um, someone says my niche is floral design. So I'm not saying that people don't like floral designs. And, you know, Martin, quick caveat here too, like everything that I'm sharing, um, you know, I'm just giving my opinion on on different things. And, you know, if you, if you want to do something, go for it. Um, I don't know that floral design is a, is a passion. It's kind of more of a style, right? That's like if your niche was, you know, like retro, right? Like that's just kind of a style. So I'm not sure if it fits into passion and identities. And I think if you're trying to get impulse by customers and you're trying to get people to stop what they're doing as they're, as they're scrolling on social media, I think that might, you know, maybe if you're, if your niche, you know, was something to do with gardening and you lumped in some floral elements, like that could be, you know, a cool, a cool way to do it. Um, someone says coffee, totally, uh, definitely, definitely a niche. I got an empty coffee cup right here next to me. Um, so let me know when you launch your store and maybe I'll get something. Um, someone says inspirational tote bag. So I think like this whole inspiration concept is, is one that's thrown around a lot, like inspiration or positive thinking and things like that. And what I would try to do is bring that into an actual passion or an actual identity, right? Meaning if you want to make like inspirational or positive thinking, like the focus of your designs, do it with like maybe some sort of a hobby, like fitness, Okay, where you could lump in some of that inspiration stuff, or maybe you can create products for different jobs that sometimes maybe need some inspiration, right? If hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. I probably wouldn't try to do just like motivation or inspiration on its own, um, because you're going to end up with a design that's you know primarily text based. Um, hopefully that, um, hopefully that makes sense. The second thing um, that I do is I look for what's called a digital congregation. Um, this is. Uh, kind of a term that I made up. Um, a congregation obviously, you know, just means a, a place where people are congregating, right, where they're gathering. Um, and we want to look for those digitally, things like Facebook groups, pages, Instagram accounts, TikTok accounts, it could be Pinterest accounts, it could be YouTube channels, right? This is going to tell you that there is a community of people gathering to participate in the niche. And basically, these two steps here will reveal to you poor niche choices, Right. If you're choosing something that maybe doesn't perfectly fit into one of these categories that I've gone through, or if you're choosing something that's maybe a little bit too specific or, on the other hand, a little bit too broad, 
you might actually have a tough time figuring out what to type in to get these different types of things to, you know, to, to show up for you. Um, type the word yes in the chat if, if, um, if this makes sense. One of the questions too that I get before we jump back into to products is um, when it comes to um, choosing niches, sometimes people wonder if the niche they've chosen is too specific or if it's too broad, right? And, I, and, I, and there's not a one size fits all answer here. I would say an example of like a niche that's too broad is what I said before with nature, right? Choose a specific hobby in nature. Maybe you're saying your niche is sports, right? Well, that's pretty broad too. Maybe choose a specific sport, right? Or even choose whether you're targeting the person that plays the sport, the fan of the sport, or the parent of a kid who plays the sport, right? I think sometimes too, you might you might get too specific. Like if you're going to do like nurses, like I don't think that you need to go into all the multitude of different types of nurses, you know, that, that exist, you know? Um, on the other hand, though, if you're doing teachers, of course, I think doing different subjects could be good because, you know, that that'll help you to like reach a, a different group. Right. So I think there's a lot of intricacies to, to niche selection. I think the key, though, like I said, is, you know, trying to make sure that it's actually a passion. It's actually an identity that there are some other sellers and that there are digital congregations. Um, what I was going to say about products is, you know, Printify has tons of stuff, um, almost a thousand products in there. And. I think sometimes I've definitely been there. Um, type type the word "been there" or type the words "been there" if you've ever wanted to sell everything. You know, I've 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 had situations where I start a store and before you know it, I am like thirty designs deep on like several different products. Um, I've worked with people that when they first you know jump on a call with me, they've got over a hundred designs in their store and they're just trying to sell everything. Um, what I always try to do with with a print on demand store is to do one thing very well. And when I say one thing, I mean like one type of product, right? What we're doing when we're creating our own store is we're trying to like get ourselves a specialty, a core offering, right? This is your competitive advantage. This is gonna help you to stand out in your niche. You're, you are not a beachside gift shop. What I mean by that is you don't need to sell every type of t-shirt, every type of hoodie, every type of sweatshirt, every type of phone case, every blanket, every mug, every travel mug, like do one thing very well. Okay. Your store needs to have like a thing, right? If you were going to create a flyer for your store about your unique thing, like what would that be? That's your number one question uh, that you need to figure out. Um, I'm not saying you can't start a store and have like t-shirts and mugs and sweatshirts, but you should have a star. Okay. You should have something that is like the lead product of your store. Okay. For example, let's say you're going to create a store and your niches were like the cooking, baking, grilling, right? Of course you could have like t-shirts, mugs, and sweatshirts with like t-shirt with like those niche designs on it. But what if you had personalized cutting boards, right? Or like personalized things for the wall. Printify has a lot of wall art that you allowed people to use to decorate their kitchen. And you were kind of creating a store that was not only in the cooking niche, but it also served as a place for people to get customizable stuff to decorate their kitchen. Okay. Or instead of doing mugs, t-shirts, and sweatshirts for people that are nurses, what if you explored all of the different footwear that Printify has to offer and you created these really one-of-a-kind shoes for nurses to wear on their shift. I've seen several print-on-demand stores that only do shoes, uh, and they do it very well because they're creating a competitive advantage for themselves. Or what about home gym, right? Instead of just doing T-shirts and tank tops with, like, quotes on them, what if you created, like, wall flags and posters that people could personalize and hang in their home gym, right? Think of the competitive advantage there rather than just doing, you know, what everybody else is doing with the t-shirts, mugs, and sweaters, right? What about decor for someone's game room, right? Let's say that gaming is your niche. Instead of, again, doing t-shirts, sweatshirts, and mugs, I'm not saying you can't have those, but like, what is your thing? Maybe your specialty is a whole bunch of home decor that people can use to decorate the room that they play video games in, okay? Start thinking about how you can do something unique for your niche, okay? You could also take it a, a little bit of a different route, right? We have kind of like three different types of stores, which we're gonna kind of quickly transition into as we get into the uh, tail end of our first webinar here. Um, a product focus store is a, is a very unique store uh, because it's a store that sells products to 
many niches, but it kind of keeps all the products in the same category. Okay. Type product in the chat if you've if you've ever seen something like this, right? An example could be, you know, like a like a store that only sells kitchen decor, but they do it for the farming niche, they do it for crafting, they do it for reading, maybe hunting and fishing, and people that live by the lake and people that live by the mountains or by the ocean. And it's just a home decor store, but they do it for lots of different niches. Right. Or what about if you if you created a store called like my awesome garage dot com and all you did was sell like doormats and like wall decor and, and things like that for someone's garage. And you could decorate it with all the different niches that they are passionate about. Printify also has an entire. Experiencing a slight visual delay, uh, but but no worries. Uh, there we go. There I am. Hi everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> Let's go ahead and continue the conversation uh, because I, I love talking about the, these products, and this is kind of may, maybe a good opportunity for me to in, inject into the conversation that uh, you, as the print-on-demand merchant, are super super lucky to to have chosen this particular uh, business model to sell to your customers because when we're talking about products you can offer all sorts of all sorts of different products or try this and try that and really the penalties for perhaps uh, you know going down a path in uh, in choosing a product that your customers don't want to buy is really really low because it's not like you have to buy a ton of products and pay to house them in a in a in a warehouse somewhere and uh, and and then if nobody buys them you're you're you're, you're stuck with all all that sunk cost uh, the print on demand business model gives you the opportunity to try out these products see if your customers want to buy them if if not, then you've learned something. You've learned that that's not uh, that uh, that that your targeted demographic doesn't want to buy that, and you can move on onto something else. Uh, so there's a lot of valuable lessons to be learned by picking and choosing these sorts these sorts of different products to offer to your customers. And and again, you're only out your time because again, nothing's going to be printed unless they buy something. And you, and, and you won't be charged for anything until they do, okay? So, wonderful. Uh, at least that's my two cents. And if we can go back just quickly talking about the niches, and I'm, not, I'm nothing if not a shameless self-promoter. So, if this is a subject that you're uh, interested in exploring further, uh, on our YouTube channel in the video section, there's a snippet from our Amplified uh, event that we did back in... Uh, September, where I sat down with one of the best in the industry when it comes to uh, ch choosing a niche, Starla Moore, and we put together a wonderful presentation all about this subject. So I'm going to challenge our moderator right now to go and get that link and put that in into the chat, but you can find that in the video section of, of our YouTube channel, and while you're there, why not go ahead and subscribe as well. Okay, that's enough from me. Uh, I, think we're, I, I, think, I think we're back up and running, so Joe, go ahead and, uh, and, and, and uh, take it away. Let's, uh, let's, let's jump back in with products. This thing on, hopefully? Yes, um, yes, all, go all ahead. Of a sudden, all of a sudden, I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure what happened. Um, yeah, so basically, there, there's a there's a ton of different options. Um, you, you the goal with product selection is is to is to try to get creative for your niche. You know, you don't need to be a store that does everything. Um, you are creating your unique space, and you want to try to do one thing well. Whether that's one type of product category, and that's what your store is about, and you cater to lots of different niches, or if you're just catering to one niche, you're offering a handful of products, right? You don't need to have, you know, the entire Printify catalog uh, inside of inside of your store, okay? Um, obviously, that kind of brings you to a point, you know, in this, in this process where, you know, you need to make some decisions, right, about what you are looking to do, right? If you're, again, if you're trying to get into building your own store before you even worry about the names, the logos, or anything like that, you have to establish who you're selling to and what you're selling them, your niche and your products. Okay, we also have, like I said, three different types of stores. Um, type the number three in the chat if you have, if you're familiar with these three, you know, store types. Um, a niche store is a store that's, you know, geared towards one niche. I love to travel.com. I am a nurse.com. I love hunting.com, right? And it's a store that only sells to that niche and that niche only. Okay. If you start a niche store and you ever want to do a different niche, you would end up needing a separate store because it really wouldn't make sense uh, on that same store. The pros of something like this is 
you have a lot of really good branding options. You can scale a brand here. You know, obviously some of the cons here is you don't have flexibility, okay? Because if you ever want to go in another direction, you would need uh, a, new, a new store. Now, we also have general stores. This is, in my opinion, again, my opinion, you can do what you want, my opinion. My experience is that while there is lots of flexibility with niches and products on a general store, it's tough to brand. It's tough to execute. It's a whole bunch of different niches that are just thrown together with lots of different products. And it begins to get, um, I don't know, a little, a little sloppy. And it can be very time consuming too, to get one of these together. Um, you're creating entire product lines, tumblers, socks, posters, blankets, sweatshirts for all different types of niches. And that's, that's a, you know, a big, a big, a big task. Um, I always talked about product focus stores. These are stores that are going to give you flexibility with niches and you can brand yourself behind one type of product. Okay. Obviously a con here would be that there's limited flexibility um, because, you know, if you ever wanted to sell another product, you probably wouldn't want to because you've created a product uh, focused store. Okay. Um, basically what I'm saying to you is as you're getting into all of this and trying to start your store, Niche first, product second, store type third, and then get to work on actually making your designs. Okay, once you have all that stuff, once you have your niche in your products, deciding what to do next can be difficult. I've seen people start their store and create designs and designs and designs over months of time before they even launch their store. Um, I teach about a concept called a minimum viable store. The idea is to do the minimum amount of work possible to make the store viable and launch. Okay. This means if you're starting a niche store, choose one or two products, make four to eight designs total and launch literally four to eight listings on the site and launch. If you're doing a general store, choose one or two products, choose five niches, make four designs for each niche. So we're talking 10 to 20 listings on the store and launch product focus store, choose one product, choose five niches, make five designs, five listings on the site, do this and open. And then add more, right? So that way you don't spend months and months and months trying to create the perfect design before you open your store. Okay, I think sometimes people um, put way too much pressure on themselves to create their best seller right away. And if I'm being honest with you, I would say every single print on demand product I've ever worked on was not a success at the beginning. I would almost guarantee that every single person out there who is having success with print on demand and selling products consistently are not selling products that they created at the beginning. Type yes in the chat if that, if that makes sense. If that makes sense to you, then you should realize that most people fail at the beginning and that's okay, right? So basically what I'm telling you is just get started. Get started, allow yourself to make mistakes, have fun with, with it and don't try to create your best seller before you even open, okay? What's much more important is if you prioritize launching so that way you can learn. Just like I talked about earlier, if Martin was actually going to start selling prime rib and he had never cooked a prime rib before, there's a good chance that his first prime rib maybe wouldn't be the best. And that's okay, <laughs> right? Eventually, Martin would learn how to cook some prime rib. And, and the same thing is true here, right? You're likely not going to be an all-star at print on demand the first time you launch your store. Um, and, that's, and that's totally okay. Um, and like I said, as we you know continue to go through this webinar, we're going to continue to plan things out. Uh, we'll be going through, um, like I said, uh, basically you know how to how to start mapping out your site. We'll we'll touch on domain names and logos and and you know constructing a minimum viable store. We'll talk about some marketing strategies on social media um, and paid ads with influencers. And you know, like I said at the beginning, this is not just for for experts. Um, it's, it's for people, if you're looking to start a brand, if you're looking to start something for the long term, this is just a completely different strategy than selling on a marketplace, right? Sometimes people are all tied up with like the platforms, right? Like Amazon versus Shopify or Etsy versus WordPress or Etsy versus Shopify. And it's not really about the, the platform. It's about the strategy behind it. And that's what we're going to be. Um, that's what we're going to be going through. So um, that's what I got, Martin. Um on, on my end. Um, Wonderful. Well, um, that's, thank you so much for that presentation. And folks out there, we're basically only scratching the surface with this first webinar. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give you two whole weeks and come back here next, uh, on uh, January 18th and continue this conversation. And it's, what that's going to do is going to allow you to put 
the advice that Joe gave you into practice, okay? And that's gonna give you enough time to let it breathe as well. Maybe you wanna rewatch this a few times, let it really sink in. And then as you're uh, testing out new niches, as you're going through your products, okay? Um, it's, uh, and, and you'll be all set and ready to go by the time we meet up here again on the 18th for round two. Okay, but thank you so much, Joe. That was absolutely wonderful. Um, and whether you're watching on, on live or repeat, feel free to revisit this as, as, as often as you like, okay? But um, I promised that I was gonna give away a little bit more money, and uh, let's go ahead and do that before we go to the uh, Q&A section, or Q&A portion of today's discussion. And a uh, quick shout out to Druzified, who was the winner of our uh, first coupon code giveaway. Congratulations, Druzified. But uh, I don't know, Druzified, you got another chance here. Maybe you can walk away with 100 bucks today. But uh, I'm going to ask everybody to take out your Printify account and click on where it says wallet and go to the payment section and navigate down to where it says coupon and prepare yourself to enter today's second coupon code. Okay. Now, are you ready? Let's go ahead and learn it all. All one word spelled just like this. Type that in and good luck to those of you that are the fastest typers. And we learn it all because as print-on-demand merchants, there is so much information out there. And the coolest part is, is there's so much free stuff out there. And it's perfect for people that are just starting out. There is, uh, we have our uh, uh, blog articles from Printify. We have our YouTube channel, the videos, plus all of my former webinars that I've done in the past. You can find all those uh, uh, available to you 100% free. My live Q&A sessions that I host on Mondays and Wednesdays free. Plus any Google search will get you going in or, or, or YouTube search will get you going with more free information out there than you can live 10, you won't, you won't be able to consume in 10 lifetimes. So uh, do yourself a favor, become a student of this and uh, you can find information that's, uh, that's niche specific, that's, that's product specific to exactly your situation. So go out there, search it out, find the voices in this industry that speak to you, those voices like Joe Robert, okay? All right, and uh, let's, uh, let's give you a chance here to plug your socials one more time before we uh, go to sure. the Q&A section. And then we're gonna pop sure. that link in for that free course one more time into the, into the chat. Sure. Yeah, I am. Um, you can you can search my name on YouTube. Um, jo just Joe Robert. Um, like I said, I try to upload helpful content. Usually, you know, two videos a week. Sometimes one video a week. You can you can you can see that there. And then um, I'm also um, very active in my Facebook group, Print on Demand Ninjas. There's about eighty thousand members there, and um, it's a it's a great time. So if you want to check that out, you can. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's go ahead and. Uh... Let's go ahead and answer a few questions. Um, our sure. first question today comes from Mama Habiba. Mama Habiba, thank you so much for joining us, Mama Habiba. Wonderful to have you. Uh, Mama's question is, I'm interested in why Shopify rather than WooCommerce, uh, in why Shopify rather than WooCommerce. It seems to me that sure. Shopify is a much pricier option. No? What's, uh, sure. What are your thoughts on Shopify versus WooCommerce? So I think if we if we just take cost out of it for a second, what I would say is if you're someone that has never designed a website before and you've never created a website, um, WooCommerce is going to be infinitely more difficult for you. Um, Shopify is an all-in-one platform, meaning you build your store and it's very simple. It's very straightforward. Like I said at the be or not at the beginning, but at one point during during this webinar, I have a free course that shows all the setup um, steps of it. Um, it's very, very, very user friendly. With WordPress, in order to have a shopping cart on WordPress, you need a certain plugin for that. Um, for example, with Shopify, when someone orders a product from you and Printify fulfills it, all of your confirmation emails and everything to the customer, including tracking numbers and delivery notifications and all of that, is just automatic. Um, not the case with, with WordPress. There, there's a lot of other things too that are just automated inside of Shopify. They happen all in one for that Shopify subscription price, right? So if you're someone that has a lot of experience with WordPress and you've been using it and designing websites for years, WordPress probably you know could be a cool option for you. Um, myself, when I got into print on demand, I was not experienced at all with building websites. Um, Shopify was an all in one solution. Um, it does have a cost. Um, but we're starting a business here, 
You know, um, I, I think sometimes we expect everything to be free and, and that's not the case. You know, there is a subscription fee for Shopify. Um, they have promos all the time where you can get $1 a month. You can get, I've seen $5 a month at times without a promo. I think it's 39 a month if you pay monthly, you know? Um, so it's, yeah, there's a cost there, but it's certainly not, um, something that is not to be expected, if that makes sense. Um, Shopify is a, the number one e-commerce store hosting platform in the world for a reason, um, and they charge for it. Exactly, and since Mama brought it up here, uh, and I, personally, I know plenty of people that swear by, uh, by WordPress and they just go all in on WooCommerce, but yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's important to note here that a lot of the concepts that you presented today can translate over to those other uh, standalone totally. uh, 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 sites like Wix and WooCommerce and the big commerces of the world. So it's totally. so it's not necessarily totally. all Shopify specific. Yeah, if you open up a Wix store, yeah, you're still going to have to choose a niche and, and get your and get totally. your products. So so uh, totally. it, so this it, this is uh, although we we're basing the conversation on Shopify, uh, there there's there's plenty that can be gleaned that that you can apply to your standalone store regardless of your sales platform. Okay. Wonderful. That's exactly right. Yep. All right. So let's move on. Uh, the next question comes from um, All Things Trucking with Forest. Thank you for joining All Things Trucking with Forest. Um, can you have just a general store, like a store that just sells anything and everything? Because I, I have thoughts here, but I want to hear what you have to say. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so general stores are definitely one of the store types that we that we went through. You know, we have niche stores, we have general stores, we have product focused stores. I have the experience that tells me that when you're selling on social media and you're kind of attempting to generate customers on an impulse basis, one of the best ways to do that is to come up with some sort of competitive advantage, you know, to have something special about what you're doing. And if the name of your store is just like joesprintshop.com and you have cutting boards for people that love to bake and you've got blankets for military moms and you've got tumblers for nurses and you've got wall decorations for people that love hunting and you're you know also creating products for you know newborn babies who want to grow up and play baseball and you're just all over the place then i think that's a tough thing to execute you know especially when it comes to you creating a social media page to represent your brand when you're in all of those different buckets you're kind of you know, sometimes people think that they have to do everything. And like I said, I think that it's much better to try to do one thing very well, you know, rather than trying to sell to all of those things, try to do a couple things very, very well. And, you know, I've seen that work much better than trying to do it all at once on one store. Exactly. And I just want to, I, I just want to echo exactly what you said there, Joe, uh, choosing a niche and a, a specific customer allows you to focus Okay, instead of selling everything to everybody and having a broad focus, you can really get to know your customer, get to really understand their needs. And what your brain and, and once you once you do a deep understanding of who you're trying to sell to, your brain is gonna do some work in the background too. You can be out, you know, uh, fishing at the park, thinking about something else, and then all of a sudden, boom, your brain's just gonna snap into focus with something for your customer or a way to alter something that you're already doing to make it more customer focused. And it's gonna be a much better way for you to, uh, to, to, to understand comprehensively how to target your customer, as well as being able to focus any marketing efforts that you have. So, uh, so I, I agree 100% there, okay? Uh, wonderful. All right, let's move along. Andres Negi. Andres Nagy has a question. Thank you for joining us, Andres. Uh, is it a bad idea to do a mixed niche in one store or best to open up multiple store to do more than one niche in one store or just or, or one store per niche? I think kind of similar to the first question, right? It, it would depend on what the niches are. You know, if you were creating a store for people that love everything from cars, trucks, motorcycles, and boats on one store, then those kind of go together, right? If you were doing people that love to cook and people that love to bake and people that love to cook things on the grill and do barbecue, well, then those kind of all go together. If you're doing science teachers, math teachers, English teachers, those, those kind of go together. If you're doing people that love bulldogs and pit bulls and boxers and German shepherds, well, those kind of go together. If you're doing nurses and then also people that like 
to bake cookies and then also people that like hunting and rock climbing and trucks together, then you get, you begin to get into that general store territory, right? So I would say if you are going to have multiple sub niches, there, sh- there sort of should be an overarching theme, you know, to the, to the site um, is, 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 would be my recommendation rather than taking them all together on one. Okay. Wonderful. Um, let's go ahead and move on to uh, Alex's question. Alex Ott has a question. Uh, this, this one, uh, this one's going to be for me. Uh, what Printify product is new that you feel strongly about being a winner? And I'm going to answer this question, Alex, a little bit differently here because right now we're on we're in the mindset of uh, of analyzing the recent massive holiday season that we just went through. And I'm going to give you one of the one of the surprising winners, one of the win- one of the products that I've been preaching that is going to that that was going to be big someday. And I'm Happy to say that I was proven right finally this year, and that was wrapping paper. Wrapping paper was always was always popular, but for some reason this year we saw a uh, a marked increase in the demand of, of wrapping paper from print-on-demand sellers. Now, what that means is is uh, you can buy wrapping paper down at the Walmart for I don't know a few bucks, any and, and, and it's super cheap. So you so in order to sell print on demand wrapping paper, well, you can't sell it for a few bucks. It's going to be a little bit more expensive. So what what this is telling us is that there are people out there willing to pay for wrapping paper that is unique to them and that speaks to them. And I've been preaching customized wrapping paper for years. Like uh, if you if, if you like if you have three kids, you know Timmy, Jimmy, and Johnny uh, to have customized wrapping paper with Timmy's name, with Johnny's name, and 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 uh, t- uh, Timmy, Tommy, and Johnny's name. Um, on it, so you don't need a card. You just put it under the tree. Everyone has their has their own wrapping paper. So um, that is something you, that you, that you might want to hang on to the, this year. And uh, if not, uh, uh, unveil it for next year's holiday season. See how that plays out this year. So don't sleep on wrapping paper, Alex. Okay, at least that's my answer there. All right, let's move on. Let's do a couple more questions before we have to say goodbye because we're all because we're running out of time here. And I want to be uh, I want to be respectful of. Our, our guest time and of, of our viewers' time. So, um, um, uh, 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 um, okay, um, videos, uh, videos gone funny. Uh, now, this, this is probably a question that we're going to explore in, in, in later uh, webinars, but videos gone funny's question is, how should I set the prices? Where should I do the research? I have an answer here, but I want to hear what you, wanna, uh, what you have to say. Sure. Real quick on on products, um, you guys, Printify, you sent me this um, a little while ago. <laughs> um, I think this is going to be huge once you got once you guys uh, launch this. So uh, this is this this would be the one that I would pick. Um, in terms of um, in terms of pricing, um, the question just let me refresh my memory, Martin, was basically how do we go about pricing? How do we figure out what to price products at? Yeah, basic pricing. Yeah. Got it. I always tell people that. If you're an adult, you likely have some sort of life experience that tells you what a general good price for a specific product should be. Meaning, you probably have a pretty good understanding that if you it was priced at seventy-five dollars, that expensive. That's kind of like as cheap as like hoodies are going to get, right? So, what I always say is, come up with your range, okay, of your like your normal price and then like your crazy price. And then at some point, you're going to want to try to get a little bit higher than your, your normal price, right? So that way you can make profit. But what I, what I would tell you is if you're just starting out and you're concerned about pricing, don't be. Because at the beginning, I always price products as low as possible. I've sold products from Printify where I price them at the same price that Printify offers them at. And I might sound crazy in that, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see, will people even buy this? Can I even make a sale? Have I built a store? Have I made a design? Have I chosen a niche that people are interested in? If I'm not making sales at the same price or close to the same price that Printify sells the product to us at, well, then I'm never going to make the price at my prof. I'm never going to make the sale at my profitable price, right? So price it low. Try to go make a sale. Try to go make two sales. Even if you were priced at your normal profit level, it's not like you would have taken that profit that you made from that one sale or those two sales and closed your store down and lived off that money forever anyway. So (laughs) price it low at the beginning. Try to make a sale. If you can't, you have issues, right? And you need to address those issues before you raise the price. Because what you don't want to have happen is you spend two months on a store, you launch, you're selling hoodies for $59.99, which I've I've seen and done. 
all of our print hoodies. And a couple months into marketing, you wonder, hmm, maybe my price was too expensive. And now you have to do it all again at a lower price. Just prove to yourself first you can make a few sales at a low price and then scale up from there. Wonderful. Yes. And uh, these are the kind of conversations that I have all the time at my live Q&A sessions. People want to know, how do I set my prices? My go-to answer, and because this is a very comprehensive subject that we could literally spend another three series of webinars talking about, is go check out your competition. Okay, what that's going to do is at least it's going to tell you the ballpark in which you should be playing. So check out your competition, and so, so then you know about where to set those prices. And then do a, uh, a, an, an objective review of what you're offering compared to your customer, compared to your to your competition and then find yourself that that sweet spot and then don't feel like it's set in stone you know play with it do some a b testing whatever it, whatever it might take and i actually did a webinar on this subject i'm going to challenge our uh our uh moderator again is see if he can find it quickly on this very subject where we explore several different pricing strategies um, and several different pricing options so that you can find the one that works best for you. And remember, it, you can use several different uh, pricing strategies. You're not committed to one and, and, and apply it across your store. So, uh, but, uh, and, and, and it can change throughout the year during, uh, during holiday seasons or uh, specific events that are um, applicable to your particular target customer, okay? So, um, wonderful. So, we are unfortunately out of time, and I want to apologize to uh, the folks that we didn't get a chance to get to your questions. My apologies, uh, but I want to invite everyone to join me for my live Q&A sessions on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, those are 100% free. If you want to discuss anything that we discussed in today's webinar or anything in the print-on-demand universe, please join me in my home studio. Happy to have those conversations with you. My only goal is to make you more knowledgeable and therefore more profitable. Okay, wow. Joe, thank you so much for your time. That was a wealth of information. I'm going to give you a chance to say goodbye to our audience, but I just want to remind them to join us again in two weeks. On January 18th, we're going to continue this discussion, and it's going to be all about how you launch your, your Shopify store. So uh, we're going to pop a link into the chat right now uh, where... Uh, you'll be able to answer a trivia question based on the information that Joe provided today. Three randomly selected winners that answer the trivia question correctly will be sent a Printify webinars hoodie, a customized Printify webinars mug, and fifty dollars of Printify sales credit placed directly into your uh, into your into your Printify account, and I will reach out to the winners personally to do so. So do that right now, and let us know what you want to see from us in the, in the upcoming year in terms of, of the webinars. All right, Joe. Well, thank you so much. Um, any last words for our audience today? Um, no, just thanks for hanging out. You guys were a great little, uh, I wasn't sure what to expect you. Like I said at the beginning, I was all calm, and, and then you introduced me as the best person on the planet to talk about Shopify, and... Um, my heart rate increased, but then everybody in the chat was was uh, great, and and um, and I had fun. I'm looking forward to doing more. I appreciate the time, Martin, and um, and and it should be it should be a good next couple of weeks. Excellent. Well, you proved me right, Joe. Thank you so much, and thank you <laughs> all of you for joining us. Join us again in two weeks, and we'll and we'll continue the the discussion on opening a Shopify store. Happy New Year, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.